Today I'm going to show you a post-processing of a raw image on the left here uh, into a finished image on the right. Relatively straightforward process using Lightroom Classic only. So I uh, hope you enjoy the tutorial. Let's begin. Here's a raw image I shot of the Louvre while I was in Paris a couple of weeks ago. It was dawn so uh, the, the sun was just about to come up. We were in blue hour as you can see and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reprocess this image here in uh, Lightroom Classic only uh, into uh, this image and using relatively straightforward processes and uh, hopefully you can follow along and follow what I'm, I'm going to do to achieve this. So let's, let's jump right in. So I'm going to go to the raw image that I have we're in Lightroom Classic, so I've already imported it in as a DNG file, and uh, and it's ready. It's ready to be processed. So the first things I'm going to do, my normal workflow, is to actually decide whether this image is an image that I want to use, um, and I do that by just brightening it up a little bit because I have exposed for the highlights, so it is slightly underexposed. And as you're aware, we can we can regain quite a lot from the shadows with these modern cameras so it's best to shoot for the highlights uh, and then you can work from there going forward. So I'm going to brighten the image by one stop. You can move the slider uh, one stop here or you can just click on the box and type in one um, and that will give you one stop over. I'm doing that so I can see the image a little bit better at this, this stage. I'm also going to open the shadows all the way up so I can see what we're working with. Now as you can see the perspective um, is, is pulling the buildings in left and right and uh, by pressing I I can get the details on on the shot itself. So uh, that was the date it was taken 4.16 in the morning as you can see and uh, one second F8 ISO 100. So we generally shoot ISO 100 keep, keep the ISO as low as possible particularly if we have a tripod so we can extend the shutter speed so that uh, we can keep the noise levels as low as possible. And, and generally I shoot f8. f8 is the sharpest f-stop on a lens, normally speaking, somewhere between f5.6 and f11, depending on the lens. But what, we, what we're able to do is, is then shoot f8, which gives me one second exposure as it's on a tripod, which, is, which is, uh, works very well. So... What I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to look at the transform function, which is quite a way down in the in the menus on the right. If you go down to transform, you'll find this this little section here. Now, generally speaking, you can just click auto work. It generally works quite well. So let's try that. We'll click auto. And as you can see, it straightened the buildings on the right and it's and it's straightened the one on the left. But actually, the perspective looks like it's falling away slightly on the left. So I want to correct that. So I'm going to go to the next button along, which is called Guided. Now, in Guided, you can use lines to find straight lines on your, on, on, on your architecture. So if, for example, the, this column here, you'll note that there's a zoom in box, so you can look much, much more closely. But I'm going to click the center of that column, holding down the, the, the left mouse button, and I'm going to draw down to the bottom so that's what I want to be straight. And over the other side, I'm going to take part of the building at the top there and I'm going to pull down to get a, a straightish line over there. So it will then, you can put up to four lines in, including horizontal lines as well. I can show you that. If I wanted it to be level between here and here, I could put a line in there like that. And it will actually find that level as well. So works very, very well. If, if the lines don't appear when you go into the guided uh, button here, there's this, this little round button here. If you click that, um, it will have no lines showing. And if you click it again when it's illuminated like that, you'll see the lines will appear. So you can, you can use that. So I'm going to click done on there. Uh, and I'm happy now that that is straight and perpendicular. Uh, works very, very well. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the crop. So I'm going to go to the crop button here in the tools bar and I'm going to click on that and I'm going to look to find something that works relatively well here 
Now, actually, the the pyramid from the Louvre is 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 almost in the center. So I'm just going to pull that over so it is in the center, and that works. That works reasonably well. I'm going to pull down the sky from the top and pull up from the bottom. Now, coming up from the bottom, I'm looking for. Uh, I don't want a distraction here, and the the line crossing in front of me is actually a little bit of a distraction. So if I pull that up and crop just to the top of that line now i have this perfect leading line going away from us which which works very very well and i can bring the top down a little bit as well just so that the, the pyramid is in the center so i'm going to go for a panel i'm going for a very wide shot um, now you can use the fixed the fixed sizes which are available over here uh, i prefer quite often to just have my own crop and have in this case quite a nice pa panorama i'm going to click done so that's the image I'm going to be working with. I'm just going to hide this over this side by clicking this little triangle over here so I've got the, the full image on the screen here in front of me. So next thing is I'm going to do, go back to the basic panel and I'm going to look at what we can do with this image. So I'm going to take exposure back to zero. Now I can either click zero in the box over there or move the slider to the center or you can just double click any of the words to the left of a slider which will take it back to its starting point in this case was zero so if i double click that it will go back to zero so now what i want to do is look at how i can relight this 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 image uh, to make it look better so I'm, i've got the shadows already opened up and i'm going to bring down the highlights probably to about 70 75 something like that 72 that looks okay and uh, I'm going to start to, to, to light the area. So one of the first things I'm going to do is this, the, the light coming from the pyramid is lighting the front of the buildings over here. You can, in fact, you can see the lines on there. It looks, it looks very, very nice indeed. So I want to bring that up. I want to make that brighter. So I'm going to go up to the toolbar, go to masks, and I'm going to go down to radial gradient. Now you can press shift M for that, or you can just click radial uh, gradient. And then I'm going to pull out quite a large radial and I'm going to place it in the center of that building. And I'm going to alter it by using the rotate, which is just outside any of the dots. You can rotate the, even from the top or the side. And I'm going to get it so the perspective of this is the same as the building is over there. I'm going to move that back a little bit there like that. Just make it a bit wider. Now, if I brighten that, 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 that building up, by using uh, more exposure so for example I can raise that up it looks very nice and I can add a bit more orange to it just to make it glow a little bit nicer by moving the temp slider up a little bit maybe adding a little bit of magenta as well just to, to make it bright now that that does look a lot better but what we have done is we've ended up lighting the sky as well so what what we really need to do is subtract the sky from this radial filter. So you'll notice in the mask that you have had to subtract as two options. So the mask one is a radial gradient, which we've, we've put there. And what we want to do is subtract and select the sky. Okay, so it will, it will select the sky and it will subtract that. So now if you look at the, if you actually look at the, um, there's the sky mask. And there is the radial mask and you'll see that the sky isn't included now so that works very very well but also I don't want the pyramid uh, to be lit by this as well so I'm also going to subtract the select subject so that will take away the subject so if I put the subject in now it thinks the subject is the building and the pyramid and actually um, I don't want the, the the building to be subtracted so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove I'm going to remove that by clicking the three dots and deleting subject one. So that didn't work. So instead what I can do is I could subtract a brush. So you'll see my brush will appear here. Now I can reduce the feather down to zero and the flow to a hundred because it's got in the center a minus that means it's subtracting and it's only subtracting because we're inside mask one from the radial gradient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the on the pyramid just inside on the pyramid there. And that's starting to remove the radial filter. But what I'm now going to do is hold down the shift key 
on, on, on your keyboard and then click at the bottom of the other end. And holding down the shift key draws a straight line between the two points. You can see it draws a straight line there. So I now have a, a straight line of removing a brush and it needs to come over a little bit because there is um, there's a little edge there. So using the square brackets next to your return key, you can make your, your um, brush bigger or smaller. You can also wheel your mouse in the center to make it bigger or smaller. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller just to come in there and I'm actually going to zoom in slightly so we can see and holding down the space bar I can move the screen across and what we're going to do is we're going to go in there slightly bigger brush click again holding down the shift key go to the bottom and take out that edge so that 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 looks pretty good now so we've got that there but I want to take all of the um, all of it out so I'm going to do the same on the other side I'm going to click there hold down the shift key click at the bottom I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger now because now I can I can just draw inside to get rid of the rest of the radial filter that was in there. So I'm just going to come over here, just going to take this bit out along the bottom here as well. So click in there, holding down the, the shift key. I'm going to click there and I'm going to cross over to this side as well, just so we 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 darken that down. So now I'm going to zoom back out again. So now when I hover over the uh, radial, there we go. What you will see is we have, there's the overall radial filter, the radial gradient. And if I um, hover over, you will see there's the sky and there's, there's the uh, gradient now with the sky removed, there's the sky, and with the with the brush marked area moved, I didn't need to go right the way over to the right because the radi the, the radial gradient doesn't go that far, so um, so that's working very well. So I now have that lit as I like it. Um, I might have a little fiddle with that and maybe bring down the highlights a little bit, open up the shadows a little bit, just inside mask one, which is what we're still on. Uh, as you can see there, that's the mask. You can see that it doesn't include the pyramid, doesn't include the sky. And I'm going to add a little bit of clarity just to that area. You see how that pops on the building? Looks looks really good, really good. Now I want to do the same on the other side. The other side is a bit darker. It's not receiving as much light. It's further away. So I can either um, you copy the, the radio over, but I generally prefer to start a new a new radial gradient which you can do by clicking in the mask or pressing shift M and I'm going to pull out another one quite big put the center in the building like we did before and I'm going to just rotate that to match the building there make it slightly bigger and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to subtract the sky okay there you go, you can see the sky has been taken away. Now I can boost the exposure on the building and add a nice shade to make it look golden, just like the other side, a little bit of magenta just to make it pop. That looks pretty good actually. I might even extend it out just a bit further. Move those out of the way, bring them over this side. Just make that a little bit bigger. There we go. So that works quite well. In fact, I might even go just a bit more and give it more golden look. So happy with that. I'm going to do the same at the back. So I'm going to create another radial gradient and I'm going to pop it in on the back. Now there is not very much light on this one at all. Uh, so we will need to push the exposure up, up a bit further. So I'm going to bring the exposure up and I'm going to bring up the temp to get the colors similar similar sort of color almost all the way up there just uh, yeah now it's not quite gold enough so a little trick is to half all of the settings that you had here and then right click and duplicate the mask not the gradient gradient or the mask itself 
and what what we can do is then it, it's it's given us twice as much capability with the colors so if i bring the colors up now i can actually get closer i go to the one that's underneath which because there's two because we had copied one over top of the other i can bring that one up as well so just bring down the magenta and uh, there we go we've got the two together to give us that effect so a little bit of clarity like we did previously and then a little bit of contrast just to make it the same so now we've got that that color looking pretty good pretty good I just check that I did clarity on that one a little bit of clarity on that one as well okay now with this one we need to subtract the sky so subtract the sky and of course we've got the one below so we should uh, do the same to that one subtract the sky so no longer have the sky in there that's that's pretty good um, it is lighting up the side of the of the pyramid there so whilst we're in in there like we did before we can in mass free we can subtract the brush and we can mark off uh, copy out the the um, sorry blank out the the radial filter I'm going to zoom in holding down the space bar to move it to the right position I'm just going to place a brush in here using the wheel on my mouse just to make the brush smaller and I'm going to take that down to the bottom holding the shift key to get a straight line there we go you can see it's subtracted I'm going to come along the bottom as well and then I'm just going to work my way out just clicking holding down the shift key so now I can make my brush bigger and I can just move away from that there we go and just paint that bit out there so we don't have that uh, that mask on the on the pyramid itself so go back to, to here so we're starting to look like something now starting to look pretty good I have to say so I'm just going to pop that in there so we've got it out of the way for a minute so now I want to do deal, deal with the sky so you can just create a new mask and select sky okay but that does a blanket selection of the whole sky and um, and if you do any alterations in terms of color or exposure it just hits the whole thing equally now nature doesn't tend to be quite near like that it tends to be um, more, more uh, dynamic in the way it looks so what we can do is uh, let me just set those back by double clicking on the letters what we can do is whilst we've got the sky selected in our new mask four what we can do by sky where the sky is highlighted go to the three dots to the right click on those three dots and you'll see intersect mask with and that allows you to add another mask to the mask that you've already got so what we can do is we can add to that a linear gradient and we can pull that in from the right like this so it's about just over getting on for two thirds of the way across so now when we do a, a gradient on the sky it only does where the linear gradient is um, so it doesn't affect the buildings and what we can do is I'm going to create a color shift from left to right so if you know your color wheels the opposite of blue is yellow or orange so we want to have an orange yellow orange sky on the left we want to have a blue sky on the right so now I've selected that mask intersected it with a linear gradient I'm just going to bring the temperature down to make the sky a bit more blue and I'm going to make it a bit darker over this side not too dark uh, got the blue in there now I'm going to do the same thing again so I'm going to create another mask select the sky that same thing I'm going to intersect it with a linear gradient and I'm going to pull it from the left to the right two-thirds of the way across now I'm going to add the orange colors and some magenta not too much magenta and I'm going to raise the saturation just to try to bring in more color over that on that side Now, it's got a bit of a magenta hue. I haven't put too much magenta in there. So I can go to the hue function here 
and leaving it on use fine adjustment I can hold down the slider and I can move the slider to see if I can improve the color of the sky more pink if I go that way and um, there we go. and it goes into the, the, the different colors there so I'm probably going to go about minus minus 10 or something like that so we've got the sky on the left which is uh, which is magenta yellow as though the sun's coming up I'm just going to adjust the magenta slightly and the sky on the right is blue uh, so that that's starting to look like something now if I want to double that up like I showed you previously I'm just going to do a negative exposure there slightly not very much pop quarter of a stop I'm going to right click on there and I'm going to duplicate mask 5 right so now you can see the colors are really starting to creep in there um, so we just need to be very careful with that so that we don't see too much in the way of, of bright colors up there. You know what doesn't work so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take out the copy so click, click it on the mask right click on the mask and delete mask 5 copy okay so it goes back to where we were so I'm just going to stick with the colors we've got there that's looking it's not looking too bad now sky is looking okay I probably want to bring in a, a gradient from top to bottom as well so I'm going to create another mask select the sky same thing and this time I'm going to intersect the sky again with uh, a linear gradient and I'm going to come straight down from the top to bottom so that we can bring in a negative exposure just to darken the top of the image down slightly I note that this blue is a bit too blue so we can go back to mask 4 and we can take some of that blue away by moving the temp slider back over to the right slightly so it's not too too much as we go now we've got a mid ground and we've got the background which is the sky but I think we also need a foreground um, so we can we can make a foreground from the the, 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 the stonework that we can see Again, I'm going to create another mask. I'm going to go to Radial Gradient. And this time, I'm going to pull out quite a large Radial Gradient. And I'm going to take the dot and just put it just out of shot. Almost as though there's a light off, off to the side that's illuminating this area. And then I'm going to bring up the exposure. Quite bright, so a similar sort of brightness to these buildings. Add in some gold to try to match the color a little bit. A little bit of magno, uh, magenta, yeah, not too much. And then I'm just a little bit of clarity just to make it pop. And uh, that gives you a, a foreground effect as you can see uh, when you're looking there. Now there's a little little something that's appeared over there. Now we can see it. So I'm gonna come out of my masks, click done. I'm gonna go into the spot hill tool here. I'm going to take a little spot here and I'm just going to take that out. There we go. Also, whilst I'm here, I'm going to take out the this the three blocks here. These two don't look too bad, but this one over here is a bit near the edge. So I'm just going to paint that out as well using the spot healing tool. There we go. It doesn't look too bad at all. So a couple of things left to do. I think we need to do something with the pyramids. And we also need to do something with the statue. So what we could do is we could light the statue up as though one of these boxes was actually providing light. So we can uh, go to the masks again, create a new mask, grab a radial gradient, and we can we can put a light on the statue as though that was coming from this little box here, and we can brighten that up there we go and there's a little bit of color as well now we can do the same we can right click duplicate the mask and make another one on this side as though it's coming from this box over here again add, adding a little bit more gold there just so it looks doesn't look too bad there we go it's not too bad you can it's it's illuminated now 
probably would have some light on the ground coming from the uh, from there so I'm going to create a new mask radial gradient and I'm just going to put a light on that box heading that way so it looks like it's it's sort of illuminating up that direction and let's uh, brighten that up I'm going to turn it so it looks like it's going that way add a bit of gold in there so it's the same sort of color a little bit of magenta there we go so obviously you wouldn't see the light around this side of the box so what we're going to need to do is uh, we're going to zoom in onto the box using the space bar to move over so we can see it now we're in we're, we're on this this mask nine is this radial gradient so we're going to subtract a brush this time and we're going to put 100% feather and 50% flow because what we want to do is create an effect that the light is coming out of there but not behind it so I'm going to click here behind it and then I'm going to click over here holding down the shift key to draw a straight line and just go back and forward slightly to take away that radial gradient going in that direction and I'm going to do the same going up that way so I'm going to go there like that I'm just going to pop that in a couple of times just using the shift key to hold down and then I'm going to change it now to 100% flow and a very small feather only five and I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to take the rest of that radial filter out from behind and you see how I drew a line there so it looks like there's a little shadow coming off the edge of there and we're just going to take that away there we go now I need a smaller one just to get in on that last little bit of the of there. I'm going to zoom in a bit more let's go into 300 there we go holding down the shift key so we're just taking that radial filter away from this what we now call a light box yeah, that's good and I'm going to zoom back out so now it looks like we have a light coming from here onto there and we need to do one for this one as well so we're going to zoom in on that one as well so in into there bring it over so same thing create a new mask radial gradient and we're going to put the light as though it's coming out of this box up onto that up onto there like that we're just going to bring that up in brightness add the gold to get the color right a little bit of magnolia there and magenta there and then just going to turn that so it looks like it's it's actually lighting up So same thing, subtract from that a, um, a brush and we're going to go to 50% flow, 100% feather and I just want to come in there as I did before, click once, left click hold down to draw the straight line and I'm going to go back and forth just to build up that shadow. There you go and I'll do the same around this side. Just going to take that out. Going to go up to 100% now. Bring the feather down and just tidy up the rest of that. Uh, make the brush bigger. I'm just going to come in there like that. We'll do the same on here. We're going to zoom in and we're just going to. Uh, take away the rest of the, ra the radial gradient that's covering this this block so we haven't actually changed anything in this image all we've done is made some areas brighter and some areas darker we haven't actually changed the image itself 
so so we zoom out so let's have a look at that yeah that looks pretty good i think it's probably a bit bright on the building over there so we can always just take another mask create a new mask grab a brush um, and then we can just go in there and um, and what we can do is we can click auto mask on here we can have the flow at 50 and quite a bit of feather just going to zoom in on that side of the building there holding the, the space key down so I'm just going to get in here and just darken down this area now with auto mask on it tends to stick to the same color or contrast areas so it won't paint on the horse or the statue generally it will only paint when I start to click wherever the positive is that will be the reference for the auto mask so I can come round and I can darken down these areas here we go without actually uh, and in there as well look so it only darkens down the the area that you want to not not the whole area so that that works quite well actually so that's that's good so I'm going to accept that as done I'm going to come back over here to uh, zoom back out to fit so we've we've lit him up um, if anything we might be able to make that a bit brighter we can go back into masks we can go onto the actual mask 8 which was the the one lighting there we can make that a bit oh that's a bit too bright come back a bit a bit more orange there we go same with this one I can click on that and I can add a bit more orange and a little bit more brightness not too much there we go and let's do the same with that one make that one a little bit brighter and we'll do the same with this one make this one a little bit brighter as well Probably a bit too bright to come back just a little bit. Same though, not quite so much. There we go. So last job is to light the pyramids that we've got here. So same thing, create a new mask, radial gradient, pull out a nice big radial gradient on top of this, put it where the light, the center where the light's the brightest, which is here. Then we're going to subtract a brush. We're going to have the feather at zero and the flow at 100, so it's a minus, so it's taking away. And we're going to zoom in nice and close onto, um, onto here. And we're going to take the radio away on the outside. So I'm going to click there, holding down the shift key at the bottom, click again. And then same at the top, click once, hold down the shift key, click again at the bottom. And then we'll go along the bottom, so click there and go to there holding down the shift key and the same to there holding down the shift key so auto mask is still on i can turn that off so that that looks pretty good let's get rid of that over there so i can now zoom back out take a larger brush and just take out the remainder hold down shift key to go straight let's take out the remainder goes all the way over there all the way down there you can see it all the way around and then down here as well so remember we're only removing the uh, the mask and so that's left our radial gradient just as the pyramid so whatever i do now in terms of the sliders will only affect the pyramid. So if I make the pyramid brighter, I can make it really bright, silly bright. Uh, it doesn't look natural. So I can I can just make it a little bit brighter. There we go. I can add a bit more gold to really bring the the colour that it really does look like that. It does look very golden. And I'm going to pop in a bit of clarity just to make it pop a little bit. There we go. Maybe even a bit of texture as well. Works very, very well. Need to do the same with the smaller one. That's much darker. So we'll go to create a mask, radial gradient, um, slightly smaller one like like before. We'll put the the centre of the light there. Just gonna make it a little bit smaller. That's it. Then we're gonna brighten it right up. Add in the the colour. 
and add a bit of contrast this time because we've got a bit of a reflection on there and some clarity there we go that, that looks nice and but what we need to do is subtract a brush and we're going to zoom in again so we can see what we're doing space bar to move over there's a bit of a little bit of noise there as well so we can go down to the noise slider here and just turn the noise reduction up just a little bit to get rid of that and we can add a little bit of sharpness as well just to compensate so I need to subtract so I've got subtract brush as you can see it's got a minus in it go to the edge click once hold down the shift key click again click once hold down the shift key click again we come down a little bit on that one and again there we go got the edge of that go along the bottom of the window that's it same here make the brush bigger so we can go around the outside and take the rest of that radial filter away so I'm going to zoom back out do the same again just to make sure there's no more oh I went over the top of it well if you make a mistake like that command or control Z command on a Mac control on a, on a Windows machine and I can just go around and just make sure we've got that all done so it needs a little bit more contrast just so it, it's had a similar look to this so I'm going to bring the contrast up a bit more um, quite a bit of contrast there I'm going to bring that sharpening down a little bit because it's a bit too sharp now and, uh, and I think that looks pretty good actually um, so I think I think that's done I think that's a, a nice image where we started press F to get full screen and you can have a look at your image of course it's non-destructive you can always go back and change any part of it just by going back into into the masks well i hope you enjoyed that uh, i did and um, look forward to showing you another one soon thanks for now bye